now we have been joined by our leader, one who clearly un understands the necessity of keeping Section 5 in place, not only keeping it, but expanding it. Section 5 should be uh, something that we look at across this nation. I'm from the state of Ohio, and I know we need Section 5. Uh, so I want to bring now to this podium uh, my friend, our leader, Nancy Pelosi. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you for bringing us together today on the steps of the Supreme Court in a year when we are observing the 150th anniversary of the Emancipation Proclamation, on a day when we are dedicating a statue to Rosa Parks in the capital of the United States, at a time when the Supreme Court will be hearing arguments about the right to vote in America. In 1965, President Lyndon Johnson declared to the Congress and the American people that in our democracy, the most basic right of all was the right to choose your own leaders. He reminded us that the history of our country, in large measure, is the history of the expansion of that right. He urged us to overcome a legacy of bigotry, racism, and discrimination, and we did overcome by making the Voting Rights Act the law of the land and by opening the doors of democracy to millions of our fellow Americans. In that same tradition, we have come together four times to reauthorize and preserve this landmark law, succeeding each time in a bipartisan way under Republican presidents. In 2006, the last time the bill came up for consideration, we worked across the aisle, working with Speaker Haster to bring this bill to the floor, strengthening the Voting Rights Act in a bipartisan way. And in the future, and, to, and now, we hope that that will always be the case. Voting rights is not about any party. It is not a matter for partisan debate. It is not an issue for just Democrats or Republicans. Voting rights is about who we are as Americans. It is about the cause of equality, our nation's heritage, and our hope. It is about the strength of our democracy. Today, we have come together on the steps of the Supreme Court with a clear message. The right to vote must be preserved. The right to vote must be protected. The right to vote must remain the cornerstone of our democracy. And that right to vote must be for all Americans. For our democracy, we must protect and defend the Voting Rights Act. For our democracy, we must block efforts to suppress the vote. For our democracy, we must answer President Obama's call in his State of the Union address to shorten lines at polling places to ensure that all citizens can pass, cast their ballot without obstruction or delay. And we must make sure that as we have a, a ease the right to vote, that all votes are counted as cast. For our democracy, it is our responsibility to ensure that every citizen has the right to vote. Every vote is counted as cast, as I said. It is our duty to uphold the vision of our founders of a government determined by a vote of the people. Later this morning, as I mentioned, we will gather to dedicate a sta statue of the great Rosa Parks, a brave woman who stood up for civil rights by sitting down on the Montgomery bus. The movement she ignited and the cause she inspired, led by Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and countless others, some of them here, Reverend Jackson and others, John Lewis, Mr. Clyburn, imagine that they are serving in the Congress and so many here, Mr. Uh, Conyers, our former chair, maybe future chair of the Judiciary Committee. Well, I, the list goes on and on. Uh, the movement, uh, Rosa Parks at Night, it, and was, it was inspired, uh, she inspired, led Dr. King and countless others to march for their rights and drove President Johnson and Congress to secure our most basic rights. Today, the Supreme Court must choose to follow the same footsteps by upholding the Voting Rights Act, securing the promise of equality and justice, and reinforcing the cornerstones of our democracy. I thank you for allowing me to be part of this. 
God bless you, and God bless the United States of America. And God bless the Supreme Court. <laughs> Thank you.